Here's the moments that you've been waiting for. In this video, I'm going to compare two entry-level portrait lenses for my Kofosa shooters. On this silver corner, my absolute favorite, I even call it the king of Michael Forsett lens in one of my previous videos. The undefeated champion, Olympus MGCO 45mm 1.8 MSC. On the black corner, we have our new challenger, and after some serious transformation, the now capable Yongno 42.5mm 1.7 STM Mark II. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Hi, my name is Jimmy Chang, a photographer and filmmaker. This channel is created to help you become a better photographer, videographer, or both by sharing my 16 years of experience working in the commercial world. I also review text and gadgets to help you get those shots and videos better and quicker. I'm also an Olympus ambassador, so you will see a lot of Michael Fawcett's equipment in my videos. But I'm talking about photography and filmmaking in this channel, so everyone is welcome. Remember to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell to stay notified for all my upcoming contents. I've done an in-depth review on the latest Yongno 42.5mm 1.7 Mark II, and if you haven't seen it and want more detail about the lens itself, here's the link to the video. And this particular video focuses on performance comparison between Olympus and Yongno, which mostly aim for the same intended audience. At the time of making this video, I don't have the official pricing for Yongno's 42.5 Mark II, but after some digging around the internet, I did discover the Far East launch price at $120, which is significantly cheaper than both Olympus and Panasonic's offerings, but a hair more expensive than its fellow competing lens, the Yi 42.5 1.8, at an astonishing US$100. But don't forget, we are talking about fully electronic autofocus lenses here, not manual lens. No matter how you look at Yongno's latest lens, it's hard to argue its value, especially it is a fully functional lens with performance to match. But just how much do you get for your $120? I've long been promoting the Olympus 4518 not because of my status, being an Olympus ambassador, but as a professional photographer who's been shooting portraits for over 16 years. I rarely come across a lens that can provide professional grade performance for an entry level price. It may not be weather sealed, but this portrait lens does represent what a great Michael Forsett lens should be. So, without a doubt, Olympus 4518 performs well in the sharpness test. Even at wide open 1.8, the central area has plenty of sharpness. It even stretches all the way to the edges of the frame. Yes, there's a hint of softness there, but definitely not severe enough to discourage you from doing some off-center composition. Yongno 42.517 performs well enough to compare with the Olympus. At 1.7, central sharpness is good on its own, but when you compare with the Legend, you will see the difference. Olympus has a tighter control in terms of light dispersions and managed to keep the contrast at higher level, resulting in a more modern look in terms of sharpness. On the other hand, Yongno is slightly softer than Olympus, but interestingly, there's a hint of halo in the brighter areas of the image, resulting in a lower contrast image overall. This could be useful when shooting in the darker areas, but definitely not as good during the day. Surprisingly, edge sharpness is about the same, but Olympus easily outperforms Yongno. But I wouldn't say the difference is huge, so credit to Yongno's optical team. All in all, Olympus is clearly a more superior lens. Sure, as always, bokeh is very subjective and everyone has his or her preference when it comes to the look of the bokeh. In both of my reviews on the Olympus and Yongno, I highlighted that they're both producing good looking bokeh, but I was reviewing them independently. And now we can look at them side by side and let's see which one is better for your taste. I have two sets of test images here, one with a natural light background and one with a very strong artificial light source, so you can really analyze the quality of the bokeh. With the natural light background, you can see that, despite some subtle differences in rendering, both produce rather pleasing and creamy looking bokeh. 
One thing I did mention in my previous Yongno review was that there are some CA issues with specular highlights. As you can see in my next image, as soon as a bright light source in the background, Yongno seemed to struggle a little with green edges around the bokeh ball, and this is consistent even with outdoor. Also, the shape of the bokeh is less than perfect circle too, despite shooting at wide open. On the other hand, Olympus performs flawlessly, as you can see from the image. There's no CA or the bokeh ball is as round as the full moon. Nah, tasty. Having said that, I'm just being a little picky here. However, and again, Olympus has won. In my previous Yong Nuo review, I did say that the new 42.517 Mark II is a vastly improved lens, especially in the AF and overall speed department, with the introduction of stepping motor to drive the elements inside the lens, and I was pretty impressed. But now, we are comparing it to the benchmark setting 4518 from Olympus. Even at 10 year old, the Olympus is still regarded as one of the best micro forward lenses ever. To make this test as hard as possible, I chose to use continuous AF in video mode as a demonstration. CAF in movie mode is one of the toughest tests for camera's processor and lens speed. The two has to work and communicate constantly, and react quickly to the random changes in video recording. First, let's have a look at Olympus. As you can see, even at a tender range of 10, the Olympus 4518 still keeps up perfectly. And more importantly, the focus shift action from my face to the background is silky smooth. Same thing can't be said with the Yong Nuo. Well, it does manage to track and continues to lock on my face when I'm moving in and out, left and right. However, when I purposefully disappear from the frame, you can see that Yong Nuo hesitated, and there's a bit of back and forth jitters. Almost like it was still looking for my face, instead of just going for the preset focus point, which is at the center of the frame. This is consistent even in the photo mode, so there are times that the AF just seems to struggle to decide what to do, but once you see the subject, the accuracy is high and tracking speed is more than sufficient. In sheer AF performance point of view, even at 10 year old, the Legend 4518 from Olympus still outperforms the brand new 2021 lens. Manual focus? Well, they are both focused by wire, and has this infinity rings that turns forever. But Olympus is an easy win here, since it is speed sensitive, so it's easier to control than Yongno's forever ring, which feels more like a body that seems to detach from the body, and seems to turn forever just to change focus by one meter. However, Yongno has one thing to score some brownie points, and that is close focusing distance. Olympus 4518 commands a relatively modest 50 cm close focusing distance, and Yongno is much closer at 30 cm, resulting in a higher magnification should you want to do some close up detail shots. Finally, which one of these handles better? Well, if you look at the size of these two lenses, it's quite easy to say Olympus wins, hands down, right? Well, I did say that many times, you've got to try the equipment in your hands, so I will leave the decision to you. I actually like both lenses, and Olympus is really a master when it comes to sheer compactness for travel photography. But Yongno isn't bad, despite its larger exterior and being 20% heavier, the combination can potentially give people with larger hands a better fit. Neither lenses is considered heavy or big, so they would fit any Micro Four Thirds camera bodies, small or large. There you have it. If you look at the test, it's hard to argue that the Olympus M Drico 4518A is still the king, and more superior in every way. But Yongno isn't far behind. Okay, there are some flaws, but I wouldn't consider a deal breaker especially when you're considering the cost. At less than half the price of Olympus, it's pretty cheap. And by the way, neither of them comes with a lens hood. So, which one would I recommend? Of course, if your budget can stretch, the Olympus 45 1A is a better choice, and it should last you for a very, very long time. It's also more video friendly, due to a more consistent and smoother operation. Yongno's newly improved 42.517 Mark II is a good lens, and I stand by my recommendation in my review. 
So get it if you have limited budget or just want an occasional portrait lens that will give you reasonably good results. We consumers need choices, and now we have a few. Yongnuo's original 42.5 may be a disaster, but clearly the company acted quickly and improved it with the Mark II. Now we have four entry-level AF portrait lenses in the Micro Fourth Rem. Olympus 45.18, Panasonic 42.5 OIS, Yi 42.518, and now Yongnuo 42.517 Mark II. Aren't we lucky? Of course we are. So this is the end of the video and I hope you find it useful and informative. You know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to support this channel and me. Peace. <laughs>